Welcome to today's Enbridge stock analysis. Enbridge stock is down 1.3% year to date, underperforming the S&P 500 big time. And looking at their earnings, things look pretty interesting, with a small miss on EPS but a big miss on revenue. Main reason why people like EMBA stock is because of the dividends, and I understand why with a 7.4% dividend yield. However, payout ratio seems a bit high with 129%. And if we look at the total returns in the past 5 years, we see that Enbridge stock underperformed the S&P 500 by a significant amount. So could this be the perfect time to buy Enbridge stock? Well, by the end of the video I will give you my 3 price targets, so make sure to stay tuned and see how I build up to these price targets. And more importantly, which price target is the most justified in my opinion? I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does Enbridge do? Enbridge owns extensive midstream assets that transports hydrocarbons across the US and Canada. The firm has a small renewables portfolio, primarily focused on onshore and offshore wind projects. And here we see some 2023 highlights, where they exceeded midpoint of the 2023 EBITDA and discounted cash flow per share guidance. They increased the dividends for the 29th consecutive year and debt to EBITDA looks pretty good at 4.1. Enbridge announced 10 billion of new secure products, including renewable power. They also announced three acquisitions of three US gas utilities. And here we see that adjusted EBITDA is a little bit higher in the fourth quarter of 2023 versus 2024, but we're talking minimal growth here. It's the same with distributable cash flow, and cash flow per share decreased. Earnings per share slightly increased, which is the positive thing here. For 2024, Enbridge expect to grow a little bit in both the EBITDA and discounted cash flow per share. To me, this looks pretty decent. Earlier in the video, we saw that Seeking Alpha is telling us that Enbridge has a 130% payout ratio. Based on the discounted free cash flow, the payout ratio is at only 65%, which may seem high, but for companies like Enbridge, it is actually pretty decent. And now that we know a little bit more about the company, it's time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week. And also join my Discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free, so don't miss it out. Let's continue by diving into the fundamentals. Enbridge stock is a 76 billion market cap company. PE ratio is at 60, which indicate they could be undervalued. Later in this video, I will show you my three price targets for Enbridge stock, so make sure to watch until the end. And in the meantime, please let me know your thoughts on the current valuation. Revenue is at 32 billion, and in this graph, we see that revenue went up in the long run. However, it is not really steady and consistent, and it is also down recently. Margins are going up in the long run, but again, it's not really steady and consistent. It's the same story with the EPS, so definitely keep an eye on this number. Analysis have a positive feeling for the EPS in the coming years, with 8-9% to growth from 2025 to 2027, but both 2024 and 2028 do not look any good. For the revenue, it is also looking pretty interesting. Analysis expect revenue to hit almost 43 billion in 2027. But per year, the growth numbers are very different. Return on assets is sitting at 2.8%, which is a low number. Return on equity looks pretty good. And the most important number, return on invested capital, is sitting at 4%, which is a low number. It is higher versus the 5 year average, which is something that I really like. Current ratio is at 0.8, which is a decent number, nothing really special to mention here to be honest. Right now, Enbridge has 82 billion in debt. I prefer companies that can pay down at least a big chunk of the total debt, with the total cash. Enbridge has 6 billion in total cash, so they can't pay down a decent amount of their debt. 
To me, this looks pretty bad. Potentially, this could be a red flag. So, it is very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt, of course, but also to buy back shares, pay dividends, and all other things. And here we see that free cash flow is going up in the long run, which is looking pretty good. But it is not really steady and consistent, so keep an eye on this number as well. Shares outstanding are increasing, which is something that I don't like. However, companies like Enbridge increase shares to raise capital and grow the business. When shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio, and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyways, dividend yield is sitting at 7.4%, which is an insane number. Annual payout is at $2.64. Payout ratio is around 65% and not the 130% displayed here, as we saw earlier in this video. The 5-year growth rate is at almost 5%, which is a decent number. And here we see the dividends paid since 2013. We see that Ambridge did increase the dividends at a decent pace. But in the most recent years it is going up, and down a lot. And most recently it is even decreasing. In this graph we see the expected dividends in 2024, 2025 and 2026. Of course this is an estimation that can be highly impacted by results, but it gives you a rough indication. It is expected to increase at a low rate from here. And overall these dividends look really interesting to me, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare Enbridge stock with the overall market, in this case the S&P 500. Next to that I added APD. On the 5 year chart we see that Enbridge underperformed the S&P 500 big time. And keep in mind this is including dividends. EPD also underperformed the S&P 500 big time. On the 1 year chart it is pretty much the same story. It is again EMB that is having the lowest return and was outperformed by the S&P 500. On the 6 month chart it's getting a bit more interesting with 10% return for EMB. But still, the S&P 500 was the better investment here. On the 1 month chart it is finally EMB that is beating the S&P 500, but only with a small difference. Bottom line, in the past 5 years the S&P 500 was by far the better choice here. But could this be the perfect time to buy Enbridge stock? Well, let's check the 3 price targets that are created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the 3 price targets, starting off with revenue growth. For the revenue growth I'm filling in 2, 4 and 6%. Based on the historical performance, the Rhone outlook, but also because of the analysis. For the profit margin, I'm putting in 13, 14, and 15. For the free cash flow margin, I'm putting in 20, 22, and 24. For the PE ratio, I'm putting in 12, 14, and 16. For the price to free cash flow, I'm putting in the same numbers. My desired annual return is 12.5%, since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now, Enbridge stock is around $36. I hit analyze, and we see a lot of red numbers. We have a low price target of $20 to $31. We have a mid price target of $26 to $42. And we have a high price target of $35 to $57. To me, the mid price target is the most justified here, indicating this stock is in the middle of this range. So what do you think is the most justified price target here? Let me know in the comments down below. My final conclusion on Enbridge is that it could be a great dividend income stock. However, it comes with a risk. This industry in general is a bit more risky to me. Most fundamentals look pretty decent, but I personally prefer a bit more steadier business. Again, from a different point of view I do get the excitement. The only downside that I find is the decreasing dividends for 2 years in a row now. That's not a good sign. From a value point of view it is also not looking that great. They are in the middle of the range and I personally lean a little bit more to the lower side of this range. So for now I'm skipping this stock, but I will keep analyzing them from time to time. And remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about a stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. 
hope you liked this video and it did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.